I'm hoping to clear something up in a very quick video here because I've been asked so many times, do I use Luminar Neo exclusively? If I use it as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom, how do I do that? And do I use Luminar Neo for my real work? Which I guess they mean, do I use it in a professional context as well? And the answer is yes. And I wanna show you how I might use it in terms of a Lightroom, Photoshop to Luminar Neo workflow. First of all, why would I use three applications to do that rather than just doing everything in one? I leverage the best parts of each one. So Lightroom is fantastic for cataloging, so much better than any other software out there in my opinion. I then like to go to Photoshop if there's any part of the edit that requires specific brushwork because Photoshop really excels in allowing us as artists to actually control the brushes. Beyond that, whereas I used to spend many hours in Photoshop with creative editing, blend modes, all the good stuff that Photoshop can do. I've now accepted that a lot of the expertise that I used to bring to my creative edits through Photoshop can be achieved so much easier through Luminar Neo through a slider based approach. Let me show you what I mean. So I'd like to finish off this dance photo here, make it just a little bit more of an impactful black and white. And I'm inside of Photoshop, but if I quickly jump to Lightroom, you'll see that this whole dance shoot was actually captured, imported into Lightroom. That's where it's been organized. The ability to do tagging, keywording, star ratings, all of that stuff. Yes, we can do that inside Luminar Neo now, but I prefer to do that inside of Lightroom. I've been working that way for many years since Lightroom first came out. And so it's what I'm used to. So I would do my initial raw development on the photo here, and then I would export this into Photoshop. And for this photo, it started off looking like this. The very top of the photo was rebuilt with Lightroom's generative AI. And I love that tool so much, but just like Luminar Neo, it also has a resolution limitation. So if you're trying to add AI generated content to a large format photo, like this 45 megapixel file from the Nikon Z8, you're going to end up with blurry pixels so you can see the difference between the actual camera resolution and what the AI generated there in Lightroom, which is a bit of a shame, but look, I don't think it's gonna matter for the fact that I'm actually planning just to do a social media post with this image. But let me just show you what I've done to this image in Photoshop. I just added a curves layer just to drop down the brightness value of the background just a little bit, and then I've just masked that in. I added some additional atmosphere with a couple of smoke layers before I did my black and white conversion, and then I just merged those layers down and then just burnt in the edges just a little bit more. Now, while I like the photo as it is at the moment, I just don't feel like there's enough impact and drama on the dancer himself. And so what I could do is come in in Photoshop and start finessing my curves and then masking those in. That is one way to do it, absolutely. But I prefer a better way to do it now is to work inside Luminar Neo. So what I do is create a stamped visible layer. I'll just throw away that curves layer because I don't need that. And then I come over to the filter menu, I come down to Skylum software and just invoke Luminar Neo. And now within the edit section, we have a free reign of all of Luminar's really cool creative tools, all slider based so much quicker. So something we could do for black and white is to add a bit more structure. So I might wanna do that just over the dancer and perhaps some of the flower that's puffing up there as well. And usually I'll go a little bit more heavy handed than I might wanna finish up with with these kind of tools because it's gonna reintroduce this as a layer inside Photoshop and then I can just play with a mask or the opacity inside of Photoshop. There are a lot of really great tools inside of Luminar for dealing with black and white, but one of my favorites is the dramatic tool. Look at that before and after. Those are just the default values. So I'm just gonna have a little play around, see if I can't improve this. I think we're getting a little bit too bright there, so we'll keep it dark and moody. And then I'll just drop the amount back, I don't know, somewhere around 59 before and after. Yep, that's looking pretty good. Sometimes I brush in a mask to apply the effect only where I want it inside Luminar Neo. And sometimes I'll just bring it in as a complete layer without any masking and then just use Photoshop's layers and masking features there to actually bring the effect in where I want it. So here's our before and our after. And I feel like things are just getting a little bit too crisp and crunchy. And so what I want to do is just soften that off and the mystical tool. Oh yeah, I'm bringing in mystical. It just softens things off really nicely and we get a nice softening and glow all at the same time and with the addition of a little bit more contrast as well before and after. I want to keep those shadows nice and dark 
And now we can just play with that smoothness. So we can either sort of add more definition to his muscles or just soften things off a little bit. And I think for this one, we'll just soften it off slightly. And another really nice thing we can do with the mystical tool is to colorize the black and white one way or the other. So we could warm things up if we want, give it a kind of golden look, or we could push it to the blues and just cool it off. So I might actually just add a bit of this because I can always desaturate it again afterwards. And I'll just bring that amount down a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. And now I'm gonna click apply. And there you go. We have our Luminar Neo version added as a layer over the top of what we had before, which now in comparison looks very washed out, very tepid, and then bam, look how much more impact that has before and after. And one of the really nice things of working this way is we can control the opacity if we like the effect, but we think we've just overcooked it a little bit. So we could bring in, I don't know, 64% before and after. So you don't need to go whole hog on the effect. If I change my mind about that blue coloration, I could just come in with a hue saturation layer and just reduce the saturation. So we've got the effect of what we just created, but we're back to a pure black and white before and after. And now if I press F a couple of times on the keyboard, we can see that on a nice white background. So that is with the Luminar Neo edit. So often when I'm deeply entrenched in a Lightroom Photoshop workflow, I will still be calling on Luminar Neo just to expand my creative possibilities and allow me to do it as a slider based approach. It's so quick and so easy. If you don't have Luminar Neo yet, they currently have a spring sale well worth checking out. I've got a link and a discount code in the description below. I am not being paid to make this video. I'm just sharing the information of a tool that I enjoy and that I like to use as part of my workflow that I've been asked about so many times. So if you want to get it, check out the link in the description below. I do get a small commission from that, which does help me keep creating this free content for you guys on YouTube. So I hope this has been helpful and if you want to see some more photo editing techniques why don't you check out that video right there and i'll see you in that one bye bye for now